Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. We're still waiting for some parts for the Forester. They're coming from Japan, so they're taking a bit longer. So what we're gonna do today is tackle the last bit of the brake system on the Impressor. And what that is, is basically replacing the front discs and pads. And yes, it might sound a bit boring, another video about brakes. But what we're gonna talk about today is uh, warped discs. What they are, how this happens, how can we do to prevent it, and what do they look like? And since I didn't do it in the last video because I was so excited to go for a drive, I'm going to show you how to adjust the handbrake in this setup and in the setup that the Forester has. But before all of that, let's roll the intro. So what does it mean when someone says to you, your mechanic or your friend or whoever's checking your brakes, that your discs are warped? It means that basically your disc surface is wearing unevenly. How can you tell if your discs are warped? So what sort of feedback they're going to give you? Well, basically what is going to happen is when you're going to put your foot on the brake doing, let's say, 40 to 60 miles an hour, this can vary depending on how good or bad your brakes are, it's going to give you a bit of a wobble on the steering. Right, it's going to be, give you a bit of like this, a bit of shaking. So you might wonder what can cause your disc brakes or rotors, depending where in the world you are, to warp. The main cause of the main cause of warp discs is basically excessive heat. And what that means is basically when you're driving down the road, you put your foot on the brake. Basically, the brake pads sandwich the disc and create a friction between the brake pads and the disc and that way they slow down the car. Well, what happens is, if you do a lot of hard braking, last minute braking and stuff like that, you create excessive heat on those discs and those discs don't get enough time to cool down. And because they don't get enough time to cool down, they're gonna end warping. Okay, so there's something for you to watch out. So what can we do to prevent all discs from warped? First and foremost, is gonna be regular checking. And when I'm in regular checking, I don't mean that you have to check it every week, but maybe once a month, just have a look at the brakes, see what they look like, see how it feels, see the feedback that the brakes give you every time that you brake. The second thing we could do is make sure that the brake pads that we actually put on the car and the brake discs are the correct fitment for this car, for this caliper, and for the amount of power that you're making. Another thing that we can do to prevent this, as I said in the last video, is going to be to bed in the brakes properly. So as I said, for the first 200 miles, more or less, don't do any hard braking if you can avoid it. So be quite mindful about that. And that's gonna help for you to bed in the brakes and the pads and not give yourself any more issues down the line. So before we tackle the brakes, as a quick summary, what we need to do to prevent our disc from warping, make sure that they are the right discs and pads. Make sure that we bed in them correctly try not to do a lot of hard braking and constantly hard braking and make sure that we keep our brake system well serviced. I remove the front disc as you can see right there and I forgot how annoying it is this setup here where Subaru put that bolt for the caliper carrier or whatever you want to name it. This one here right here it's a 70 mil it's a 70 mil right here at the back of the knuckle and basically collides with the bottom bolt for your shock absorber and your knuckle. I can't manage to get a 17 mil socket half an inch so I had to get a 3 8 and let me show you the setup. I had to get a 3 8 17 socket with a small extension and then an adapter from half an inch to 3 8 and then a breaker bar. So I forget how annoying that is sometimes. New discs and pads have been installed. They're silver instead of black, which I like. I don't know, it's silly, but I like the look of them. As you can see, it's raining. Good British weather. Thanks so much. I'm loving it. But yeah, we're not going to complain anymore. We're going to put the caliper back on. We're going to talk the caliper carrier and the caliper. We're going to go to the other side. I don't think you can see it, but we're going to do this side here. And once I go then two done, and before it starts raining even harder, what I'm going to do 
is once I've done both sides and I got the car on the ground, we're gonna have a look at the brake discs. Um, I'm gonna try to show you the signs of a warped disc. Just remember, whenever you're replacing your discs and pads, to open your brake fluid reservoir before you're pushing your piston back, so all that fluid can go up, can race, without making any pressure, without building any pressure, and that way you're not gonna bust any pipes or crack that. So just remember that. As well, remember to check your sliders and remove them, clean them, lubricate them, put them back on, and remember to lubricate as well your guides or shims, whatever you wanna call it, where your brake pad slides in. So basically the pads can move freely whenever you're pressing or depressing the brake pedal. Let's have a quick look at our disc. Let's see what telltales we can see that is telling us that the disc is being worked. Basically, if we get it closer to the camera so you can see the angle, all those lines like this one here and the one right up here, this one right here, is telling us that the disc is not wearing evenly. As well, if you run your finger through it and you can feel some grooves in there, that's going to tell us as well that there's an issue with the disc or that we're going to have to replace it. We got the back of the disc as well. We got the same thing. You can see even probably worse all the markings, all the scorings that we got on the disc. Sometimes you're going to be able to see some blue decoloration throughout the disc, meaning that the disc and the pad did embed in properly. So basically it's excessive heat and it doesn't have enough time to cool down. So you're going to have some blue marking as well. All right, so this is one of the setups out of two that we're going to be looking at today. To adjust our handbrake, all we're going to have to do is pull the handbrake off, jack up the car, take the wheel off and align this with the bottom of the car. So we want this as centric as it can be. And all we're going to do is remove this rubber bung here and I'll show you what is inside. As you can see, here we got it. This is all we need. We remove this and now we're going to have a look inside here. I don't know if the camera is going to focus on that, but you can see a wheel inside there. You can see some sort of like a gear. I'll put a picture of it if we can see it properly. And what that just is going to do is if we rotate it one way, it's going to bring the shoes together. And if we rotate it the opposite way, it's going to pull them out. What we want to do is pull them out as much as we can, sort of, let's say, because we don't want them to be already grabbing this and not let us move it. So what we're going to do is bring them out a bit and just see if it feels a bit better. After we turn it around a couple of clips, what we're going to do is go inside the car and check how it looks like. I know it's in the air, so it might not feel exactly the same, but before, basically the handbrake, I should have taken a photo of it because it was like a hydraulic handbrake. It was up here, right? So it was coming just basically almost straight. So what we're gonna do is count the clicks. And what you wanna do is stop when it starts pulling. When you feel like it's getting tighter, that's when you wanna stop. So for example, on my one in this case is one two three four and he's pulling there we give it one more five that's good between three and five is what is recommended anyway and what you can do just to confirm is to go to the wheel and just try to turn it and see if it's locked we can do that in both sides so we know that both of them are locking now that we're happy with the one in the impressor we're going to check the one in the forester which is basically the same mechanism but for us to be able to see it, we're going to have to go underneath the car instead of taking the wheel off. So let's go under and let's see what we find. So if we come underneath the vehicle, what we're going to find is the back of a wheel. Now, at the back of a wheel, right up there, see if we can zoom in. Right there. That rubber, you see that right there, is the one that we're going to remove in order to see the mechanism that we saw in the impressor at the front of the desk. But this time, it's going to be at the back of the disc. Right there, 
is what we're going to be able to adjust the handbrake. On that side, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you the arrow, but if we go to this side, which is newer, you're going to be able to see that there is an arrow right there pointing upwards, showing us showing us right there which way we have to go if we want to tighten or brake shoes. I wanted to record this video in one day, but the issue with it is the rain yesterday I got soaked while I was putting the brakes back on, so I had to call it a day. And this morning, as you saw, we started with a nice sunshine and we're gonna end it with rain. So, so hopefully you learned something on this video. Hopefully you learn how to look after your brakes so you don't get them warped like I did. As usual, I made a mistake so you don't have to. And on that note, thank you for watching, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing if you do. And I shall see you very shortly.